In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah whose worth cannot be described by speakers, whose bounties cannot be counted by calculators, whose claim to obedience cannot be satisfied by those who attempt to do so, whom the height of intellectual courage cannot reach and the divings of understanding cannot reach. He for whose description no limit has been laid down, no eulogy exists, no time is ordained and no duration is fixed. He brought forth creation through his omnipotence, dispersed winds through his compassion, and made firm the shaken earth with rocks. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you all, and welcome to the third of four special episodes of Enlightening, with me, Sayyid Reza Nakfi, and our dis- distinguished guest, Brother Muhammad Reza Adil, from Iran. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Muhammad, how are you today? Allah. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. And dear views, this is as I mentioned, this is our third episode <coughs> and inshallah we we're talking about topics and issues which are very important in the daily lives and routine of young individuals, youths and young professionals. And today we'll be discussing the topic of whistle or purity and cleanliness within the importance of the religion of Islam and our daily lives and routine and within Islam it's stressed and placed upon a great importance on maintaining that cleanliness and state of purity in your everyday lives make sure whenever you are undertaking any activities whether it be prayer your daily routine waking up etc you're always in that pure state so you are able to walk and breathe in a clean environment and to make sure that you and the others around you are engrossed in that purity so it is quite important that we understand the philosophy behind this and why it is needed why it is important and how it is achieved as there are many different requisites and requirements in achieve in achieving that state of purity so brother muhammad First question really, why, why is ghusl needed, what, what, what is it, what's the purpose for it and why is it so stressed upon in Islam? A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen, khatam al-nabiyyin abil qasam al-mustafa muhammad, wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin al-ma'asumin, la sayyima baqiyat Allah fi al-ardin, روحي وارواح العالمين في مقدم الفدا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقطة من لساني يفقه قولي First of all, I'd like to send my condolences upon the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib Al-Asri wa Zaman the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and the Ahl al-Bayt on the death anniversary of our beloved Imam, Imam Ja'far Sadiq alayhi salam. As part of the program today, we are going to talk uh, about the ritual washing, the ghusl that should take place when a person needs to clean his inner self. Mm-hmm. For example, when we look at mm, when we play a sport, sure. we get dirty, our body becomes in a dirty state. Or we um, eat food and it uh, and our hands are dirty. Or we uh, do any other action, our body is practically dirty in a physical mm-hmm. state. When we look at the term ghusl, ghusl is a term where washing takes place mm-hmm. in a certain method, a certain way it should take place for our soul to be cleaned. So the cleanliness of the soul is performed either by what? Either by doing wudu mm-hmm. or by doing ghusl. Ghusl um, in terms of uh, different activities uh, which we'll explain later on why we need to t- uh, do ghusl and mm-hmm. how we need to t- uh, do ghusl mm-hmm. and what are the criteria for ghusl. But as a whole ghusl means to clean oneself for purifying our own souls. So, so you're talking about it from both a physical and a spiritual aspect. 
So two different aspects. So we're not just cleaning ourselves physically, but spiritually as well. You'll you, you understand that when we uh, when we take a bath, mm -hmm. we spend hours and hours inside the bath. But does that uh, clarify us uh, taking a ghusl? No, it doesn't. When you say water, it doesn't mean that we have taken a ghusl. Okay. Because ghusl uh, comes into steps and is performed in a special criteria, in a special way. So we can sit in a, in, in a bath for all our lives, for mm -hmm. hours and hours, but mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, intention, if that intention is not there, then ghusl is not performed. The most important thing when we want to perform ghusl is the intention. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have that intention, especially uh, in namaz, in salat, Everything has an intention. If you don't have the intention for ghusl, if you don't have the intention for wudu, if you don't have the intention for salat, then our worship is not counted. So the most important thing that we need to realize when performing this ritual washing is we need to make the intention. Because if it's wajib, you can't make a mustahab uh, intention. Okay. And if it's a mustahab intention, we can't have a uh, wajib. So for example, if a person um, uh, has had um, sexual intercourse, he needs to have a bath. He needs to have a ghusl. And this is a wajib ghusl. It's not a mustahab ghusl. It's a wajib ghusl for him to perform so that he can pray, so that he can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many um, uh, makruhat when a person is uh, in the state of Janabat and there's, um, there are many uh, Muharramat which are forbidden to perform so when a person so is in the state of... So if you can clarify for our views, what, what do you mean by the state of Janabat? State of Janabat is uh, mm, two. Uh, we can uh, be in the state of Janabat in two ways. Either by sexual intercourse or by the discharge of semen um, uh, voluntarily or involuntarily, mm -hmm. uh, if a person is uh, awake or in his sleep. Mm -hmm. So these are the two ways a person can become Junab, mm -hmm. as you say, in the state of Janabat. Okay. So to uh, perform the Ghusl and to be in that pure, uh, the state of purity, one needs to perform the Ghusl in a steadful way. The way to perform the Ghusl is to um, wash there are four steps, three steps in a ghusl. Mm -hmm. One step is, the first step is to um, wash his head okay. up to the neck. Okay, That's the first step. The se this is with intention. This is the mm -hmm. time where you have to make the intention, I'm doing the ghusl and for the sake. And then you wash your head. Y no, no, you have to do it at the same, at time, same time. Same time. I'm okay. doing the ghusl in the same. Mm -hmm. In the same way when we perform, uh, we do wudu, we uh, say our intention as we are washing oh, our yeah. face. Mm -hmm. This is the same way. When we are uh, performing our ghusl, we have to make the intention as we are washing our head, mm -hmm. from the head up to your neck. neck. So the intention is done and the first step is done. The second step is very simple. The second step is we have to wash our um, body, f the right side from the shoulder all the way to your feet. Mm -hmm. And then this is the right side done. And then the third step is nice. do it on the left left hand side. But the most important thing for ghusl is that um, uh, the condition is not in wudu, but it is in ghusl. The most important thing that we have to realize in ghusl that every part of our body has to be, has to be washed. Sure. Even if you have thick hair. Okay. The water has to reach the skin. Mm -hmm. This condition is not for wudu. Because uh, as we see that uh, men have big beards mm -hmm. and it's not uh, possible, it's impossible yeah, to uh, yeah, reach yeah. water for every s uh, sl uh, small little bit of hair. The condition is not there for wudu, but the ghusl has to be intact. Mm -hmm. Every part of that, but uh, every part of the person's body has to be in contact with water. water. So one, if, if, a, if a person is uh, waswas, as they say, if he is um, uh, on uh, suspecting if that w w yeah. part of the the, the body is sure, is not sure. touching water or anything like that, has he has sure. to he has to make sure that that part of the body has been uh, uh, in contact with water. Okay. If he hasn't, then your wudu is void and is 
uh, not permissible for you to either pray or perform any other action. The ghusl of void doesn't count. Doesn't count. Well, because if, if a person knows himself, for example, I wash my left hand doubt. side. Yeah, sure. If I've washed my left hand, uh, right hand side, and I, I've um, acknowledged that all my right hand side is uh, washed and its um, uh, water has reached every part of that mm -hmm. uh, of that side, then it's my own understanding. I know from I know myself, and I know that water has reached. Because you have to wash it thoroughly. Yeah, yeah. And then if someone has that um, suspicion that oh, okay, this part is not washed. And then he has another suspicion and he has doubt and uh, another part of uh, my body is not washed. Mm -hmm. If he has too much, if he suspects himself, or if he doubts himself so a lot, then um, his um, doubts uh, should be uh, put to one side and realize that water has re reached every part of his body. If he's washed it. So, so, so is this the only way of performing ghusl or are the, is there another way of... There are two ways. Okay. As um, a wuzu is performed. Yeah. As ghusl um, uh, is also performed, wudu mm -hmm. is performed either by water uh, or by tayammum, sure. by sand. Ghusl sure. is performed in two ways. You either wash your head yeah. onto your neck, right hand side, left hand side, okay, mm -hmm. in a, a chronological order. Mm -hmm. Or you can do ghusl, itimasi ways, where you, all your body is in submerged. submerged into water. For example, where how. In 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 the in the sea, mm -hmm. or in the river, okay. or in the in the swimming pool, you can either wash yourself all at once, or you can do it in step by step. But you have to make sure one thing: before you do ghusl, you have to clean your body. For example, if you have uh, become in the state of janabat, mm -hmm. your body has to be clean before so you perform the ghusl. And it's mustahab to uh, 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 go to the bathroom, go to the toilet, urinate yeah. before yeah. you um, perform the ghusl. So when you're submerging yourself, do you, is it your whole, including your head? Or Everything has to be included. Okay, okay. so even your head and your neck. Yes, you have to, uh, obviously you have to make your intention before you jump inside the pool or jump okay. inside the sea. But every, every part of that body has to go inside the water. And so when we're looking at, for example, if you went to public swimming pools, and obviously there's a lot of chlorine in the water and disinfectants. Are we still able to do ghusl in, in, in water that's, you know, with chlorine and stuff? <coughs> Basically water has been divided into two parts. Uh, uh, it's called uh, the uh, mudaf and the mutlaq. Mutlaq water is pure water. Mm -hmm. Where we can find in rivers, where we can find in uh, streams, where we can find at home um, in uh, rain water. These are the types of water that is that are pure and are mutlaq they are not mixed with anything if water is mixed for example as you say in the swimming pools yeah. chlor, uh, there's a lot of chlorine inside um, if we see if you smell and if we can taste the difference of that water being uh, different to the pure water then we are not allowed to do it right, okay. so if there's uh, something chlorine mixed into the swimming pools and we can smell the chlorine and we can see mm -hmm. the chlorine and we know that it's not pure water mm -hmm. and we can't do ghusl in that. It has to be pure water. Thank you very much. And for we're going to go for a quick break but after the break if you stay with us you can call in if you have any, any questions or any spirit situations that you've come across uh, in regards to ghusl or ablution or even in wuzu in general just to maintain that pure state which is so very important. So if you guys hold tight for a few minutes and we'll be back shortly with me Sayyid Reza and Brother Muhammad Adil on Enlightening. Thank you. <laughs> 